welcome to the advanced training session for insurance billing. Uh, my name is Jeremy. I'm an implementation specialist at PCC. I primarily focus on billing configuration and training. And in this session, I'll be talking about some configuration considerations, the claim review workflow, um, and several useful reports as they relate to insurance billing workflows. So to start with, let's take a look at some of this configuration. We're going to take a look at the billing configuration menu, which you may already be familiar with in PCC. And we'll go up to configuration and billing. So this is where you're going to want to be looking when you're having issues with, let's say, procedure codes not coming over to charge posting for an order that was ordered in a visit or for um, missing diagnosis information on the charge post screen when a charted diagnosis was placed in the visit. Okay. So for example, let's just look at some screenings here. And we can see how these are mapped already. So let's look at this autism screen here and maybe this is something that we would be able to bill for or maybe another order that we'd be able to bill for. Um, if it's not mapped to anything, it's not going to send over any billing codes to charge posting, okay? And so it will be ordered in the visit, but not billed. And so you would have to manually enter in the procedure code in charge posting, or you can edit these and update the billing. Let's take a look at this screening here, this child self-report, and just double click to edit. We see that this is mapped to 96127 and 961759. However, if we look over on the right side, one of these is pre-selected, which means that um, that will be automatically checked off when the provider goes to build a visit. And one of them is not pre-selected. And so the pre-selection and non-pre-selection could be really useful for quickly giving whoever is billing the visit, the option to uncheck one and check off the other, depending on the circumstance. Okay. You can also hit the plus button here to add additional billing procedures to map or map an ICD-10 code to an order as well. Okay. So this is where you really want to look where if you are having um, a situation where you are going to post charges and you're missing procedure codes, for an order, you see that it's been ordered in the visit, you'll wanna take a look at that order here in order mapping to make sure that it's mapped to the appropriate codes. Similarly, diagnosis mapping um, is going to be the same thing, but for the charted diagnoses in the visit. Okay, so for example, if we look at, let's search in here for some COVID diagnoses, and let's look at this exposure to SARS-CoV-2. I'll double click. We see that the assisted mapping for this from the National Library of Medicine is Z20.822, which means that when this is diagnosed as a charted diagnosis in the visit, that's the billing code it's going to send over to charge posting. Now you could change that by selecting manual mapping to choose a different code. So here's Z20.828, okay? So you could change an existing SNOMED term to be mapped to a different code or you could find a different SNOMED term that's already mapped to that code. So Z2828, we come up to our search filter. We could search in the other way, Z20828. And we can see other um, SNOMED terms that are already mapped to that diagnosis. So something to consider um, if you are having issues with you know, a charted diagnosis either not communicating over ICD-10 information or it actually needs to be a different billing code, you may wanna look at, is there another SNOMED term that could be used that's mapped to another code? Do you want to map a different ICD-10 to an existing SNOMED term that's mapped to another? You know, As appropriate, you'll want to um, review and, and make updates to configuration there if you're having issues with that. That's a couple of initial configuration considerations for when we're looking at um, the, that case of trying to get the right you know, billing information to charge posting 
so that the process of posting charges is going to be a more simple and accurate and consistent. So if we're reviewing what needs to be posted, right, we can look at an individual day on the schedule and we can filter by billing status here. You know, we can go ready to post and new items. We could click through a whole bunch of different days. But of course, this isn't super efficient when looking for across multiple dates of service, right? So if we go up to reports in the report library, we can use what we call the encounters by billing status report. You're under the billing category to run for a date range, all of the visits that have a designated billing status. And we can run this by ready to post the new items. And you'll wanna make sure you're including that new items because that's going to catch anything that's already been posted but the provider or somebody went back into the chart note and added an additional order that's billable or an additional diagnosis. That communicates that information over to the billing, to the po charge posting. However, it needs to be additionally posted to the visit. Okay. We'll hit generate. And we can see we just have one visit here from 918.21 that's ready to post. And that's our visit that's up here. So we could navigate to that day, you know, using the calendar, we're already there and I can hit ready to post and post charges and review. And maybe this was sitting here because it needed to be fixed at some point, right? Oftentimes there might be um, a coding level might need to be updated and you have to have the provider go back in, edit their billing um, to um, select a different coding level. We're waiting on that. So maybe now it's come back and it just hadn't been posted. So we can go down here and hit save and post. I'll clear that out. Alternatively, there, another way you can run this report is to look for visits that have not been made ready for billing. Um, so to look across the date range for um, any visits that a um, provider still needs to actually uh, bill for so that it can be posted. Okay, so an alternative way to uh, run that report. So once charges have been posted, um, we can review what was posted and what's batched and ready to be sent out um, in practice management. And this is good to do um, to sort of get an overview of uh, what was posted and what's going to be actually submitted before you submit claims. So if we go down to the proving out menu and you may see this named um, in your system as um, the uh, review posted charges report. You can select it. It's going to include charges that were posted defaulting to today's date. You can also run this by transaction date as well. We'll run this by the posting date. So everything we posted today before we submit claims, we can hit F1 to generate. And we see there's our patient that we posted. It's gonna show the place of service, the date of service. It's going to show us uh, all the procedures, link diagnosis, the insurance that's responsible, and any personal balance that will be due as well. What we can also see is what came over from the electronic encounter form, so the bill screen from the provider. And we could see if there was any differences between that and what was actually posted. And that could be really useful for identifying where configuration could be updated, right? So if you see that there's a bunch of screening orders, that you had to manually enter in to post, but didn't come over from the encounter form, you may wanna review that billing configuration. Similarly, if um, you are constantly um, adding a modifier onto certain codes, you may wanna take a look at what the defaults are there and what's being chosen and discuss workflow, okay? And so this will show us everyone that was posted, we can continue down and see any additional patients um, that had charges posted. It's also really great for reviewing pricing as well. So just double checking, combing through here, making sure everything looks right. As it's gonna be a lot easier to fix these things now than when you submit it to insurance and then have to end up submitting a corrected claim, right? Okay. So we'll close out of this report.
F12, and it'll give us the option to print this if we like to. So maybe you want to um, keep a version of this for your records. And F12 back. And we can go up to insurance billing and collections and run prepare slash submit electronic claims. This is going to do some um, error checking for us. And we're going to see that this is going to error out. Um, of course, on this um, test environment, we don't have real provider information added. Um, but you may see things like this, like provider NPI is invalid. Um, there are options here to correct this. Um, you could correct this in the provider table um, in your uh, table editor. We'd also call PCC support for some assistance in fixing these kind of errors. You may also see stuff like certificate invalid or missing. Okay, so um, you know you have the option to hit F2 to correct error, and it'll bring you to a screen where. Um, you can uh, correct this. However, I kind of recommend just hitting the F3 to ignore error as you'll get a separate report that's gonna give you everything that needs to be fixed. And so typically I recommend um, kind of ignoring the errors, submitting everything else, then going through your report, fixing and rebatching um, anything that errored out, okay? So it's gonna print this bad claim report. We don't need another copy. We can hit enter. And then with our report, we could go and fix the issue. Um, once the issue is fixed, we could open up correct mistakes by patient. And um, now I'm trying to remember what that patient's name was. It was uh, Blair. All right. Um, so let's say we've corrected the error now. Maybe we've corrected, um, again, like a certificate. Maybe we updated that provider's um, NPI information. Um, we see that 918.21 up here, claim to error. So it's going to sit like this until we rebatch it. So we can do that with generate claim, which is our F2. Okay, we could select the charges or we could select date of service. So I'm gonna use date of service so I can enter date. So I'll hit F4, 09, 18, 21. And then we can hit F3 to batch claim. It'll put it back into the batch and we'll be able to submit claims again. And so when we run submit electronic claims, um, you know, if this error is out again, we know we didn't properly fix it, which in this case we haven't, but this is just an example. So another thing that you can also do is review here in insurance billing and collections, um, this billing error report. Um, so this billing error report is going to be um, useful one because it's going to show us, and we'll generate it as is, it's going to show us um, any of those errors um, that are sitting there if they still are um, in error. So we fixed that other one, but there might be some others that are still aired out. Maybe we lost the bad claims report that we printed. Then you'll see we have that tag split error rejection. Again, that's that's saying that this errored um, before it actually uh, went out the door when you see tag split error like that. Okay, and that needs to be fixed and rebatched. What you'll also see here are all of these um, payer errors and rejections as well. So all these claims that are in a rejected status. Um, so you can see the account and patient information there on the left. You can see the date of the current billing status. So when the rejection came in, you can see the rejection message. Okay, So this is also a snippet of it. This is also going to show you a claim number. Um, this is really great to pay attention to, that claim number. So we'll look at that again in a moment. And you'll also see transaction date and charge amounts for this visit too. Okay. So what I recommend when running these, if you're going to now follow up on this, maybe make corrections and resubmit this, to open up a second session, which I've done here. And we want to look at this claim number, 78968. And we can go down to correct mistakes by claim. And we can use that claim number there um, to pull up the account and claim and correct mistakes. So 78968, 78968. And it's going to jump us right to the appropriate date of service and patient. And we're going to see that 
payer rejected claim number 78968. So now what we can do is we can view that full rejection message using C claim report F3. We'll select number two to see the payer rejected claim line. Hit enter. And we don't actually have um, you know, these files here in this um, training environment, um, but there you would see the full rejection message, you know, what the issue is. Maybe it's a um, invalid certificate number, something along those lines. You know, subscriber uh, not actually on the policy. Um, you know, you could then go and fix that maybe in the uh, patient demographics. Um, what you would also want to do when you're in there is write down where you see a payer claim control number or payer claim number. Um, you'll want to jot that down because we're going to use that to actually resubmit the claim after we fixed whatever the rejection issue is. Okay. And then the way we're going to do that is we're going to use um, visit status F5. You'll see that there's an enter claim ID option there on F3. So we can hit F3 to enter the claim ID. Again, we can use our 78968. This is why I like using the claim number a lot of times because it's consistent across multiple um, programs and screens that you can use this. You can also use it when you go and post payments as well. Enter. We'll page down to the last page here where we can enter our reference number and enter 09 for our claim delay reason. Okay. What we can also do here is we could add a note. So we could use F4 and post a new note of rejected or um, invalid cert all payor data set. Just resubmit um, with this claim number. And maybe we'll just say that. So we could save this. You'll notice the note is going to appear there um, with the date of that note when we did that. So if anyone's looking at this of what happened historically for this, they can see charge level notes. Then all we need to do now that we've corrected this and we've put in our resubmission information is use our generate claim again, our F2. Enter claim ID, F3. And then we can, again, use our claim number there, 968. And then batch claim using F3. And so now when we run um, submit claims electronically again, um, this is going to get sent out the door again. OK. So utilizing the billing error report to review what needs to be corrected, resubmitted, it's going to be really important. You're going to be wanting to do this on a very regular basis. You know, obviously this is a, a training environment, so we have lots of stuff here. But you typically don't want um, a lot of a lot of um, stuff just sitting out here, especially for a long period of time. Okay. So we're going to go back, and the next thing we're going to look at as well. Another thing that you can check um, regularly is this print paper claims or HICFA program. Um, and this is going to show you any claims that have dropped to a paper batch. Okay, so if I hit enter here, you'll see each payer batch and you'll see the number of claims that are in here. You'll see zero on all these, so there's nothing for us to print. Um, ideally, you want to see zero here, you know, unless you have specifically intentionally configured a certain payer to, to um, you know, generate paper claims for them in scenarios. For the most part, you'll be sending everything out electronically. So usually when a claim is dropped to paper, um, there may be some configuration issue uh, that needs to be um, addressed. So you'll want to you know, review it. You can hit enter to print it out, um, check information and correct mistakes, see if something needs to be fixed. Maybe call PCC support to fix it. Um, the most common sort of cause of this is a billing provider who's not actually configured for electronic claim submission. So you may want to take a look at that with PCC if you're seeing a provider who's consistently having claims drop to paper for them. Okay. Um, so yeah, down the road, you're going to want to um, regular review as well claims that haven't had claim errors, 
um, and haven't dropped the paper, um, but have been pending with insurance balances for an extended period of time. And you may need to follow up with the payer to find out why these haven't gotten paid yet. Um, so for this, we can utilize uh, AR reports in the system to review these. Um, so the first one we're gonna start with is the insurance aging report, okay? So this is going to ask us um, how it's going to be aged. So based on transaction date, posting date, or payer date, difference being that transaction date is going to be the date of service. Posting date is going to be when the visit was actually posted. So when the charges were actually posted and the payer date will be when the charges became um, res uh, responsibility of that payer. So that can be useful for like a secondary, um, uh, secondary responsibility, for example. Um, there's a nightly file uh, that will be here uh, for you for um, run every night just to make this a little faster. On our uh, training environment here, we don't have a nightly file, so I'm just going to use an existing file. You can also regenerate this as of a specific date as well if you want to see the AR as of a specific date or as of today. Okay, so I'm going to run this using F1 to generate, and I'll view it on screen. You could, of course, print or email this uh, reports as well. And we're going to see each insurance group in the left column here uh, with the total amounts in each aging category. So this is really good as a summary for identifying um, areas that need a further attention, right, and further review in detail. So for example, for looking at the 120 plus category, we see 23,727 in the Medicaid uh, row. Okay, so we may want to look in more detail about what's going on with those claims for Medicaid that are that old. Okay, so to drill down deeper into this, so that's for a good summary, we can go down to this list old slash pending charges report. And we can look specifically at looking at just age of receivables that are 120 or more days old. We can also set a range or a date, uh, transaction date range as well. We can set all insurances to no. So we just pick, pick a specific uh, payer group. So in this case, we're gonna look at Medicaid. And you could also filter by a provider or place of service as well. You could also use this to review personal um, charges only, um, which can be useful too. Um, and we'll typically want this to say yes to show billing history and we'll see, um, we'll see why. So I'll hit F1 to generate. It's gonna ask me which insurances to include. Um, so what I can do is I can um, hit F5 to list by group and then just quickly select you know, the entire Medicaid group, which would be all policies um, within that Medicaid group. Hit F1 to process. And then within this report, when we have this generated here, uh, we're going to be able to see each claim with full uh, billing history details, which is really, really useful. So we're going to see the account and patient name here. Okay, We're going to see each date of service that's still pending balances. And we're going to see all of this billing history here as well in, um, in uh, the order of date. So we see 22321 was when this was first batched. We see that um, the claim was acknowledged by the payer, 22521. And we see that this was rebatched um, a couple times since then. So it looks like you know, this has had um, some issues. Now it's 40721 was the last response from the payer. And since then, there have been no more responses from the payer. So this is a good case where you, know, you may want to call up the payer to uh, ask about the status of this claim, why it hasn't been paid yet, um, why it's been so long um, for it's, it to be paid when it was um, acknowledged. Is there some issue um, that we're not seeing or receiving here? And you can continue to page down and you can see more of these. So for example, let's say we went and called the payer for this. So we can go over to our other session here and we could open up correct mistakes. So let's go to second session and we can open up, let's say correct mistakes by patient. 
And who was this for? This was for Yana. Okay, and this was for the uh, 22321. So we can go down to 22321. We could also use F1 jump to item to go 022321 and jump right to a date of service. Okay. Um, and so some of these have uh, payments. Looks like there was one charge that was the um, 25. Maybe there's another one here. So we can kind of review maybe what was historically posted here. Of course, this is a, a in these training environments. There's a whole lot of you know stuff on some of these. Um, really, what I want to show is that you know let's say we called up the payer, we discussed this, and um, you know they indicated that the claim was being reprocessed and should be paid within um, uh, you know ten days, right? So I could go to visit status here. Okay, and I can enter for that date of service, 022321, and make sure we have the right patient selected. And then I could go and add a uh, note. So I could use F4, add edit notes, and I could post a new note and say, we spoke with payer, they are um, reprocessing. Great, if only they were all uh, that simple. So now we'll see that note is right there, 62421. And in the future, if we um, regenerate this report here, we'll also see um, any notes that have been made to this visit as well. Um, we may see that actually, we see here for this other patient here, for Samantha here, we see that under the billing notes um, that there was a previous note entered here. So if somebody is running this report again, reviewing the outstanding AR, they could quickly see, oh, this is old, but oh, okay, just you know, the other day, somebody went and spoke with the um, payer already about this and we are expecting um, payment soon for it. But maybe you would see, you know, expect payment in 10 days, it's still on this report, it's been a month later, might want to follow up again. Okay, so that's how you can use this um, report, this list old pending charges report to kind of one, review the details about these old charges um, and kind of what the full history and status of them uh, was, um, but it's also useful to sort of then open up correct mistakes, add notes um, where you can also review more billing information from those notes, okay? So future runs will include those notes. Um, so an alternative place that we can find these kind of reports and other claim related reports um, and, and just uh, basically every other report um, in the practice management system is what we call the smart report suite. Um, here in practice management. So this is a library of, of really powerful reports that are uh, also very highly customizable. Um, so I'm gonna show a few of them. I'm not gonna get super into details about them, um, but if you'd like to look at them on your own system, um, I certainly encourage that. And you can always call uh, PCC to ask us more information about a report, you know, customization options and more. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go down to partner reports and practice management slash financial reports. And from here, I can open up just the smart report suite. And we see we have a lot of other reports here. I'm gonna open up just the smart report suite so we can see all these categories. So these are all categorized by various types. Um, so let's look in the billing and collection reports menu. So we can select the category with F1. And so um, we're going to see a number of reports here. Um, we may see some familiar ones like the claim error report here. Um, one that I wanted to show, for example, are these CARC um, insurance detail and summary reports. Um, so the insurance detail report, if we select that, um, we can select the transaction date range and we can see 
um, each CART code that was posted from payers um, within that date range. So we'll run on this date range. Oh, maybe I'll put a wider, let's just do uh, a year's range here. Get that just a moment. And this is going to be useful for seeing um, all your payer, uh, individual payer groups and what uh, adjustment reason codes they're using most frequently and how much in total is being adjusted from those codes. So we're gonna see it subtotaled by each code. We see four or five. It's gonna give us the description of the code. And then we'll see each insurance group, the count of those adjustments and the amount of the adjustment. Okay. There's our deductible amount, one. There's a nine, two, three. Okay, so this is gonna show all those. And this is also why it's really um, useful um, to go ahead and enter that CARC information when you're posting insurance payments, um, when you're manually posting insurance payments. Of course, if these are automatically posted, then the um, CARC information is being automatically posted. But when you're manually posting payments, um, you know, sometimes people uh, just skip over entering in the CARC information. And while it's not necessary, um, you know, reports like this are going to be a lot less um, useful and meaningful if you're not consistently entering in um, that CARC information, even aside from just, you know, submitting like a secondary. Um, and, and you can, um, uh, we have another um, session on payments, um, adjustments and refunds that, that goes over that in some more detail as well, that process. Okay, so that's that CARC summary report. Um, another one that I wanted to pull up here was being a reimbursement analysis report. <clears throat> if we page down, I just used page down to go down a little further here. And we can run this reimbursement analysis by CPT code. Um, so this is going to um, give us uh, uh, a date range for these codes, transaction date range. And we can select here um, different groups. So for example, we could, um, we could do list by group. You know, we could select only our um, office visits for established patients, for example. Um, okay, we could also uh, use F6 list by pattern to search for a specific code. So if I just wanted to see, you know, just all my 99213s or something then we could just specifically search for that. And then we could select, you know, these plus all the modified versions of it. And I'm just gonna hit um, F12 and I'm just gonna process without selecting anything, which will just include all um, CPT codes. But keep in mind that you can also filter that down um, to just drill down to specific codes as well. We'll accept our criteria. There's a lot of alternate ways to run this report, uh, but if we view on screen, um, depending on our filters, basically what we're gonna see is procedure name. You may see stuff like the same procedure. Um, that's going to be what's linked by default to diagnosis that is an additional diagnosis on a claim. Okay, then we're gonna see subtotaled by each procedure code, each procedure name within there, the insurance group at time of service, the units, charge amount, average charge amount, payment, and deposit information as well. Okay, so lots of information here for each code. Like I said, you can drill these down by a specific code if you just wanted to look at individual ones, um, but by default, it will include all and subtotal by each code. Okay. Then what you could do, um, you'll notice that there's a send to button on the bottom there. That's our F4. And we could print this out. Uh, we could also email a PDF or even an ex, uh, a, a spreadsheet um, to an email address as well. So if I wanted to email this to myself, I could email this to myself as a spreadsheet, which could be really useful if I wanted to maybe further manipulate the data within here, um, export it to another sheet. Um, maybe you use multiple you know, spreadsheets um, to uh, track uh, a number of different um, items. Really useful for that. Um, so that's that F4 send to option, okay? You can also do that when you're first generating the report instead of view on screen, just go down to email and put an X in the box and then you can email it to, uh, looks like we can email it to Tim. 
So F12, so that's the reimbursement analysis by CPT code. Again, play around with that. Try um, filtering it by an individual code or prefer a code group. You can find some really useful information there. Um, there's a lot of other po really powerful reports in this part, the smart report suite. Um, because that each one can be customized. Uh, one more that I wanted to show is a pricing analysis report. And that I'm gonna go down to the charge reports category. Okay, so I'll select the category. And we see that there is a um, pricing analysis RVU report per procedure. Um, so this is going to be a uh, uh, a really good report for seeing if you are maybe under uh, under under pricing. Um, so if we run this, uh, we can set a date range, um, our database year, RVU database year. We can set an RVU multiplier. You can set your office zip code as well. So you're making sure you're getting the right geographical data. Okay, so I'm going to generate this report. And when we view it, it's going to give us each procedure code. It's going to um, give us the number of uh, units that we've charged out. It's going to give us our total charge amount. And it's going to show us the number of uh, RVUs, um, uh, RVU units, um, the total uh, amount deposited. Um, sorry, I scrolled down a little too much. Number of RVUs, charge amount, average deposit amounts. Um, and then you can see the differences of the Medicare um, uh, percent pricing as well. Okay, and you can even see an underbilled amount and what was actually deposited as well. Okay, so great way to identify if you are, um, you know, maybe under uh, charging for certain uh, procedures based on um, RVUs. All right. That. And there's also, again, multiple other um, reports here as well, um, charge-based um, uh, reimbursement. Um, one other category that I want to show here, well, just quickly, is this provider productivity reporting. And the provider productivity reports have a lot of reports that are really useful um, for seeing broken down by each provider um, what reimbursements are. So I'm going to look at um, just the charge and reimbursement comparison by provider up here at the top. Select again, we can select our transaction date range. So we'll just look in, let's say the last month. Or maybe I did it, or a year rather, <laughs> I did a year in the last year. I was gonna say, Whoa, that's, a lot. that's a lot for one month. Um, so in the last year, and we can see each provider, we can see the total units charged, total charge amount, and the amount deposited, uh, as well as um, the collected, uh, so that's payments plus adjustments, um, percentages as well, um, the percent collected uh, for each provider. Um, okay, so this is sort of like a, a summary type report. And uh, we can also use other reports in here, like total chart visits, charges, and payments, break these down further. Like I said, these can all be really customized. So what, it, what we really want to encourage is that um, look at some of these reports, right? See how they suit your needs or how they may not suit your needs. And then reach out to us, reach out to PCC support um, for some assistance finding maybe an alternate report that might be similar but give you a bit of different information that you might be looking for um, or how to customize a report. Maybe you see this report and you're like, ah, I like it a lot, but I want this column. You know, I want an additional column here to show me some, some different information, or maybe I want um, it to be rearranged in some way. Um, all these reports in this library are very customizable um, and we can assist you with that as well. Um, so definitely reach out to PCC for any help with all these, all these reports. As you see, there's a lot of them. And it's a very powerful tool, um, but it can be, you know, it can be a little difficult to get into. Um, so just, you know, hop in here and start playing around and reach out to us for any help. So this concludes the insurance billing advanced session. Um, thank you for watching and um, have fun reporting. <laughs>